Hello, my children. It is me, Pim, your weird Dutch non-binary uncle that tells you to set stuff on fire. I have returned from my trip to the supermarket and I've come back with some stroopwafels, some worstebrood pizza, uh, some coupons and why are you all looking at me like that? Okay, okay. I should probably explain where I've been and what I've been up to. I have been here, at home, where I've always been. <laughs> All joking aside though, I have actually quite a lot to say, so I will just jump to that. However, before all of that, um, if you're just here for me talking about Heroes Hour, then you can skip all the boring channel update stuff and just jump to here. In all honesty, I did not really intend to take a break from video making for as long as I did. But after that last video, honestly, I was just really done with all of it. Truth to be told, I had been feeling burnt out on video essays and BreadTube as a whole for a while now. And my last video were just the final embers of a dying fire. The video was something I very much rushed because I felt that I had to make a video to satisfy the arbitrary deadlines I had imposed on myself. I did all of that without really taking the proper care to make sure that the video was, you know, actually good. And although the video was received pretty well, I am not happy about it at all. If you look back at my output and the videos before that one, you will find that a lot of, lot of the stuff I had been doing at the time had just been rehashing old stuff I had worked on before in a new coat of paint. I felt that I was covering up for my own inadequacies in producing stuff like this, but more importantly it also showed to me how far I have strayed from when I started this channel. I started this channel nearly two years ago as a means to get through the pandemic and give myself something to do. I had been wanting to make videos for a long time and I wanted to share my experiences with the world living as a autistic person. However, as time went on, I began to tackle more and more subjects that I was honestly ill-equipped to deal with, both intellectually and from a mental health perspective. I found that I started to emulate other YouTubers who create entire documentaries worth of video essays, and I feel that I might have given the false impression that I am more knowledgeable than I actually am. As time went on, I found it more and more of a chore to really discuss new subjects and events like this. The truth is that I am just done with video essays. I have nothing new to add. I am preaching to the choir and I just don't like making them anymore. Creating video essays had warped my lens and the way I look at things so badly that I got comments from people in my personal life about how bitter and negative I'd become. And quite honestly, that was kind of an eye-opener and woke me up. So, shortly after I'd made my last video, I did some thinking, and after some umming and airing, I came to the conclusion that for the time being, it is just better if I stop making video essays. Now, that does not mean that I will stop making videos. I like making YouTube videos, it is something I enjoy doing and it gives me something of a creative outlet. It is more that I'm done with the entire genre of subject A is bad and here is why type videos. I don't want to spend more time looking into a camera and slowly explaining while, why everything is horrible while I repeat the words of better writers than me. There are more than enough people online who do that already. The world does not need someone like me to add to that. That does not mean that I will never make any political content again, never say never after all. I am just not really gonna tackle the big subjects and current discourse anymore. That only leaves me with a bad feeling. If I run into something autism related, aka my expertise, then I might create a short video about said subject, but beyond that, I would not really be expecting much else in that regard. Now, this does leave us with a question. What am I gonna do instead? Truthfully, I am not 100% sure of that. 
I've had huge plans before about making a fantasy or sci-fi web series using the rulebooks of tabletop RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons, but that is honestly an enormous project that is far beyond my current skill set right now. I might use what I've worked on regarding that in the future, but for now I think that my best option is just to make short and simple videos about whatever I'm focused on at the moment. Which finally brings us to our subject matter, Heroes Hour. Now, as many people are probably aware, I am something of a huge fan of a little game series called Heroes of Might and Magic. For the uninitiated, this is a series of turn-based strategy slash RPG hybrid game that I've been playing ever since I was like 5 years old. The games were originally developed by New World Computing and published by Tridio. You know Tridio. That publisher you might remember from some amazing titles such as Plumbers Don't Wear Ties and Semi Sosa Softball Slam. What the fuck? No wonder they went bankrupt. Anyway, after some uh, financial difficulties, bought Ubisoft the rights to the series. They released Heroes of Might and Magic 5, which was pretty well received. But they also released... <sighs> Might and Magic Heroes 6 and 7, which were not so well received. Oh, you two will get your own dedicated videos. Just you wait. After this, Ubisoft decided to kill my favorite video game series by releasing low-budget spin-off titles aimed at the mobile market. So when news broke that Ubisoft apparently has an enormous culture of sexual harassment and generally awful work environments for employees, I felt pretty damn vindicated in my grudge against Ubisoft. I was ahead of the curve on that one. I therefore invite everyone to join me in my effort to put Yves Gilmour's head on a pie. Anyway, with Ubisoft being a no-show, I had to find some other outlet for my specific Heroes of Might and Magic related needs. I was therefore very surprised to find not one not two, but three Heroes of Might and Magic like games being in development. These are spiritual successors. They take a lot from the original games, but they kind of give their own spin to it. Now, I should probably point out that there have been other spiritual successors to Heroes of Might and Magic in the past. Games like Fallen Enchantress, Age of Wonders and the Disciples series come to mind. However, none of them really scratched that itch for me. None of them gave me that Heroes of Might and Magic feeling. That feeling of exploring a world filled with wonder and magic, while mixing it with a sense of strategy and purpose. Two of the three games are still in development, with one of them still in the prototyping stage, so it is a bit too early to come to any conclusions. But honestly, between these games, the new Disciples game looking really good, and here is stream modding being more amazing than ever, I feel that we are entering a Heroes of Might and Magic renaissance. A lot of this is of course the game being more well known than ever before, but I also feel that it fits this age of remasters and remakes. Regardless of your opinion of companies remastering old titles like this, there can be no denying that it did bring back many titles from the brink of obscurity. In any case, I am quite happy with this all. And now, the moment we have all been waiting for. What is my opinion on Nero's Hour? Eh, it's alright. I should probably preface this all with the fact that I've not played the game as much as I would like to, so consider this more of a first impression than a full review, 
But overall, I am honestly quite happy with the game. I think that it is important to understand that this is an indie title, made by basically one guy in like a year or something, so I kept my expectations pretty low. I was expecting a small but competent Heroes of Might and Magic like game with some unique twists, and that is exactly what I got. That does not mean that the game is perfect or anything, or that I don't have nitpicks. It just means that I'm going to start by stating that most of my criticisms should be held with a small scale of the game in mind. The game, generally speaking, follows the formula of the Heroes series. You start with a town and a hero, and you can traverse the map, fight monsters, find treasures, and flag resource generating mines and other map objects. Using these resources, you can then build buildings in your town, which can provide you with new units, spells, new resources, and a lot of other stuff. Your main goal then is to basically defeat all of your opponents and gain total domination of the map. If you have played any Heroes game, or hell, any turn-based strategy game, then this will all feel very familiar to you. Now, Heroes Hour does differ from the Heroes games, especially Heroes 3, in quite a few significant ways. One important difference is in the way your heroes, who are kind of like your generals, level up. In most Heroes of Might and Magic games, you would usually be given a choice between 2 to 4 skills you could choose from to enhance your hero's capabilities. This still exists in Heroes Hour, but they're now all part of a skill tree. This is pretty cool, because it makes it easier for you to plan out your build in advance, and makes leveling up less of a dice roll. And before you begin, I realized that Heroes 6 and 7 tried something similar, but that implementation was honestly less clear and was overly complicated in many ways. The biggest departure in terms of gameplay though comes from the combat system. Heroes of Might and Magic games always used a turn-based combat system, where you moved stacks of units around in an almost chess-based way. Heroes Hours combat is, on the contrary, almost completely in real time. I've heard people call this an auto-battler, but I don't really agree with that assessment. At the start of combat, your stacks of units will unfold in giant formations of individual units, who will, depending on the combat stance you've set, proceed to immediately rush to the enemy and either engage in melee combat, or close the gap a bit for range units to shoot them from afar. You can kind of give orders to combat formations to move to certain places on the combat screen, but it all feels very loose, and not like you are in direct control. You can also influence the battlefield by casting spells, like making it rain frogs on the enemy, or casting the obligatory fuck you magical nuke spell that vaporizes 90% of the enemy's army. The closest analogy I could give for the combat would be that it kind of resembles simplified total war combat. I am not gonna lie, when I first played the demo for this game in late October, I was not 100% sold on this. Now that I've played the game a bit more, I can say that I like it a lot more, but I still feel a bit mixed about it. I liked the fact that the developer is trying something new here with the combat, and conceptually speaking, I think that the idea of sending huge formations of battle clowns to engage in fisticuffs is fucking amazing. However, I feel that the lack of much control in combat means that a lot of the time, the outcome of a fight will be dependent on who can throw the most units at their enemy, or who has better optimized their hero to have more powerful spells. Again, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but I feel that I don't have a whole lot of, whole lot of control over combat, and I think that having some more options besides casting spells and suicidal charges into enemy lines would benefit the game as a whole more. Putting some extra tactics, tactics in your strategy game as it is. And this lack of control is also not helped by the fact that the user interface of the entire game is honestly also a bit messy. It took me a while to get used to it, and while it is serviceable, I feel that the game has a tendency to throw information at you in a weird way, with very little to no explanation, and most of the information is spread crisscross across the entire screen. 
this can make new players a bit confused about the mechanics of the game. Now, the UI is very flexible in terms of customization. There are a lot of scaling options and ways to simplify many things, so there is definitely some thought put into it. But the town screens especially are a huge mess to navigate, with it being unclear what does what. I often find myself reliant on the simplified city planner, to the point that I'm even wondering what the point is of adding town screens besides some extra flavor. Don't get me wrong, I like the town screens aesthetically speaking, but from a user interface perspective, are they kind of a mess. Speaking of aesthetics, this brings me to the presentation of the game. This might sound a bit mean, but I would call the graphics serviceable. They definitely have a certain charm to them, and the pixel art is generally speaking decent, but I cannot help but shake the feeling that they feel a bit basic. This is of course fine for this type of indie game, and considering the time spent developing this and the amount of content in this game, is it nothing short of a miracle that this game looks the way that it does? However, I have often found it difficult to differentiate units from each other, and the basic pixel art graphical style does mean that the atmosphere of the game is a bit lacking in my opinion. And you all know how important I find atmosphere in games. With that said, I do really like the aesthetics of the town screen, and the soundtrack is really, really good. I've been playing the soundtrack throughout this video now, and honestly, in terms of presentation, is it by far the best part of this game. Another aspect that I feel could use some polish is map design. Unlike your average Heroes of Might and Magic game, are the scenarios in this game not handcrafted maps? Instead, they're all randomly generated maps using different templates. Now, to their credit, there are quite a lot of templates to choose from, and I get why they did this. It is a lot easier and less time-consuming to create something like this from a developer's perspective. However, it does make a lot of the maps feel a bit samey. Navigating the maps, generally speaking, works fine, and there's definitely enough in terms of map objects for a full experience, but playing a few games does make it clear that the map generation has its limits. I will give credit where credit is due though. I love what they did with the obelisks in this game. If you don't know, obelisks were a map object in Heroes of Might and Magic that gave you pieces of a puzzle map, which showed you a specific spot on the map where you could dig up a game winning artifact. They were a pretty cool concept, honestly, but due to the relatively slow pace uh, many Heroes of Might and Magic games have, they always felt a bit underdeveloped. Heroes Hour overhauls the obelisks in an amazing way. Instead of giving you the map to a game-winning artifact, they are instead confined to your biome, and visiting an obelisk will allow you to see shards, which you can collect and whose end goal will be digging up tr a treasure that will give you a pretty big boost in your early economy. This is a huge improvement on the mechanic from the original game in my opinion, and gives you an actual streamlined incentive to seek out those obelisks. Finally, I gotta talk about the factions. This game comes with 11 factions that each come with their own unique mechanics. Honestly, this is probably one of the biggest improvements this game does on its spiritual predecessors. The factions all feel unique enough in their own special ways, and this gives the game a great deal of variety. The Pyre faction, for example, comes with a lot of demon summoning mechanics, which gives that faction its own unique demonic flavor. Now, I have not really played enough of the game to really give the rundown on every faction and which strategy works better for each. Plus, you know, considering the hero builds that are in this game, I'm not sure if game balance is even really a thing or viable. But rest assured that if you want variety in your game factions, then you will definitely find that here. Final conclusion. Heroes Hour sets out to do one thing, namely create a fun little fantasy strategy game. And I think that it succeeds reasonably well in doing that thing. Despite the nitpicking I've been doing, I've had quite a bit of fun with this game, and I think that in general the game well justifies its asking price of 15 euros. Now, I do realize that this game might not be for everyone, and that is fine. But, if you're looking for a Heroes of Might and Magic-like experience, and are willing to forgive some of its quirks, then I would say that you cannot really do much wrong with this game. 
This game is also, as far as I know, still being updated, so who knows, maybe some of my nitpicks will get fixed in the future. In any case, I am thoroughly impressed with what the developer did basically on his own. And that is it for me really. Again, thank you all for listening to my crap. I am not really sure where I want to go with this all, but I hope that this video will be a fresh start to a new direction, where I can still talk about stuff that I like or think is important in a way that just works better for me. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time.